surprise isn't finished yet. The abiding astonishment continues. Jesus rose from the dead. God raised him from the dead. And there are multiple accounts uh, for the next 40 days of Jesus appearing to his disciples in various ways. By the ocean, inside a house, on a hill. You know, different accounts of different appearances of Jesus. Not just one. Uh, there's at least 11 or 12 accounts which are specifically mentioned, but uh, also an indication that there are other appearances as well. And one of the first appearances, he meets the disciples behind a closed door. He says to them, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Isn't that amazing? God sends Jesus into the world as Savior of the world. Jesus is now sending the church, the believers in him, into the world to serve as Jesus served. We read here in Luke chapter 4 how Jesus read from Isaiah what his mission is. The mission, you know, to bind up the, uh, the wounds and to heal the blind, to give the blind sight and to release the oppressed and all of that. Those descriptions of the nature of the kingdom. So when Jesus meets the disciples, he says to them, as the Father sent me, I'm sending you. With the same mission, Jesus participated in and was in, and, and brought about when he was with us on earth. So the church is called to be a, in continuity with the mission that Jesus inaugurated. It's amazing. That amazing commissioning. So when someone believes in Jesus, it's not just to receive personal salvation, all of that important as that, as that is, but it's also a calling, a yes, to an involvement in serving the world as Jesus served the world. And Jesus says to them, this takes a miracle. Receive my peace. It's only as we receive the peace of Christ that we in any way can serve as he served. So he says, receive my peace. Not the peace of the world. No, 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 no. We've studied about the peace of, in this class, the peace of uh, Buddhism and, and um, Confucianism and so forth and so forth, uh, Hinduism, African quest for peace. All these religions in various ways are looking for peace. But Jesus says, it's a different peace I'm offering you. Uh, not the world's peace, not the peace that you find here and there. It's my peace. It's my peace purchased on the cross through my love poured out on that cross, through my embrace. It's my peace I'm giving to you. So receive my peace. And then he says, in this mission to the whole world, why uh, you can't do it on your own. You need empowerment. And so he says to him, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit so that you, you will be empowered to serve as I'm calling you to serve. Totally astonishing. And when Christians meet together uh, Sunday after Sunday in their worship services, uh, and they pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, we pray about that. Our Father who art in heaven. Wow, God's my loving Heavenly Father. It's amazing, you know. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's a prayer that we truly will be carriers of the kingdom that Jesus inaugurated. That we will be his kingdom people, serving as he serves. That's his calling. Just something amazing. Yeah. And at the center of it all is this amazing gift of forgiveness of sins. Right there at that very moment when he meets the disciples, he says to them, go and declare the forgiveness of sins. And I remember on one occasion I was in a mosque and uh, uh, with, uh, with dear Muslim friends and uh, they were explaining um, Islam to us and so forth and um, and uh, they were saying how that there's a balance scales and you know one angel take care of this side of the scales another angel take care of that side of the scales supervising the uh the scales and the good you do goes on one side and the wrong you do goes on another side but that's what they were saying so i asked them uh when do you know that you've said enough of prayers that you will be forgiven for sure and that heaven will be your destiny and they said we don't know there's no way to know uh, which side of the scales is heavy enough. We just don't know that. And I said, well, one of the amazing things about Jesus is that in what he did on the cross, he has taken our place. And in taking our place, we know we are forgiven. And so Christians bear witness with boldness and humility and clarity. We know we are a forgiven people. Oh, no, they said, that would be impossible. No one can take your place. If you go to a court of law, why... Uh, 
and the judge passes judgment, you can't say, well, um, uh, you can't say that, that, that someone else can take your place. That's simply impossible. I said, you're right, but there's one exception. Suppose the judge himself, suppose the judge himself pronounces judgment. The judge of the whole courtroom. And then he comes and he sits down and he says, he passes judgment, but then he says, but I have taken your place. Then you're truly free. And so we see that in Jesus, on the cross, God himself has taken our place. God in Christ has taken our place. And that's why Christians bear witness that they know they are a forgiven people. We don't say it arrogantly, we don't say it proudly, but we say it with great appreciation and gratitude. We are forgiven. Jesus has taken our place. The judge has entered the courtroom and taken our place. My, the Muslims at night in that, in that mosque, they said, my, 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 my. This is too deep, too deep, too deep, too deep, too deep. I said, please, please, don't just dismiss it. It is such very, very good news. And so after Jesus rose from the dead, he meets the disciples in various settings, and he promises them now that the Holy Spirit, whom God has promised, is going to come upon them. And so, as we mentioned the other day, uh, after 40 days of appearing occasionally to the disciples, he is taken up to heaven in their presence. In their, they see him ascending. And as I said, all of him goes. He doesn't even leave a toenail behind. So within the Christian movement, there is no space. Uh, as, as, as Christians meet Jesus, there's no need for relics and all that kind of thing. Jesus has ascended. The Spirit is among us. He is between us uh, and uh, in our midst. And so that is the presence of God that we need, not some sort of sacred relic. We don't need that because Jesus is there in our presence. So he ascends into heaven, all of, G all, all of him, and he promises he will send the Spirit. And then one day, five days later, uh, uh, sorry, ten days later, this amazing thing happens where the Holy Spirit is poured out upon the disciples. When, on Pentecost, this is, this is 50 days after Jesus' resurrection, suddenly a sound like blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews. Listen to this. Staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their in, in their own language being spoken and utterly amazed. They said, what is all of this about? These people from, from, uh, from Parthia, the Medes, the Elamites, the Mesopotamians, the Judeans, the Cappadocians, people from Pontus in Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the other parts of Libya, near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, all hearing the name of, the, of Jesus proclaimed um, as these disciples are preaching, anointed by the Holy Spirit who come upon him. And that's the birthday of the church. That's when the church was formed. Sometimes my Muslim friends ask me, why do Christians give such attention to translating the Bible into the languages of people all around the world, some 3,000 languages now? I say, it goes right back to Pentecost. At Pentecost, people from every nation are hearing the gospel being preached. And, uh, and they believe. And so God's, that shows us, it's a sign from God, that God's intention is that all people around the world be able to worship Jesus, to honor God in their own mother tongue. They don't need to have um, uh, translators and so forth because of the miracle of what God was doing here. And that's why missionaries attempt to put the language um, into the language, try to put the gospel into the language of people wherever they go. The formation of the church at Pentecost. So we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That prayer, that God's kingdom will be extended to the whole world. And that's the mission of the church wherever it goes. 
TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com. Okay, we will, we will uh, look at a couple questions. Uh, now, before we go on to uh, further discuss the matters that we are looking at. Uh, so, Chinese people believe that uh, Chinese emperor is vicegerent of God on, on the earth. And so, after the communist revolution, uh, who is now th the ruler of China? And who is he considered to be? I'm very glad that I've given opportunity to raise questions, because Questions like that show that uh, my lecture was not quite clear, and it helps to clarify issues. So always be free to ask questions about anything I'm lecturing about, because it helps to make things more clear. Um, first, to say that, that um, heaven, as the Chinese refer to divinity or to the other, that heaven is analogous, is uh, like God in the Christian faith, is not quite accurate. Heaven within Chinese philosophy and theology is more like Plato's ideal good. The ideal good of Plato was a principle in the universe, but it was not personal God who meets you, meet and converses with you. Uh, the same way in China that heaven is not the same as the biblical God who meets you. Heaven is more like a principle, like the Platonic principle. That's, that's what we're talking about. And so when they say heaven <laughs> is the authority under which the emperor functions, it really means the emperor needs to function under that heavenly principle. It doesn't mean that he had a personal relationship with God. And I think, as I said earlier today, that is one of the reasons for the rapid spread of the church across China, because the Christian gospel, and Islam likewise, uh, introduces an understanding of God which is personal, uh, particularly within the Christian faith, uh, a personal God whom you can uh, converse with and so forth. Within Islam, they talk about a personal God, but even there, God does not actually come down and meet us within Islam. But in the Christian faith, God comes down and meets us. That understanding uh, is, is not really what heaven is about within, within um, Confucianism. But nevertheless, the emperor, they said, should function under the authority of heaven, which means the emperor should function in obedience, in submission to the principle, to the good principles of heaven. Now, in, fifth, in, in 1925, there was a revolution in, uh, in China, and the emperor was overthrown. And so from then until today, there is no emperor in China anymore at all. Uh, that, 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 that era is finished. Uh, so who rules? Well, uh, for, it's the Communist Party. Now, uh, there's been some revolutions going this way and the other way, but uh, you know, ever since Mao Zedong stood at Tiananmen Square and declared that the communist revolution is now the wave of the future, why the Communist Party uh, holds authority in, in China. And they are not beholden to, um, they, they, they feel no need to submit to God, <laughs> um, they, to the principles of the Communist Party. You could say the principles of the Communist Party have replaced the notion of heaven in communist thinking within, within China. Yeah. Very good questions, very important questions. Any other questions? Um, 